Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the management of hiccups. We are going to discuss the treatment of intractable hiccup, persistent hiccups in the patient, as well as the hiccups that patient experience when they are on the floor in the wards. First of all, hiccup is an involuntary spasmodic contraction of diaphragm. It is a spasmodic contraction of diaphragm and intercostal muscles that results in sudden inspiration and it ends with abrupt closure of the glottis like this. So this is a sudden inspiration followed by abrupt closure of glottis and this occurs because there is spasmodic contraction of the diaphragm. So the management and the treatment is aimed as reducing the spasmodic contraction, stopping the spasmodic contraction of diaphragm. Normally in majority of the cases the hiccups are benign. And the most common cause of hiccups is gastric distension. Gastric distension due to overeating, gastric distension due to carbonated beverages like Pepsi, Coke. These carbonated beverages cause gastric distension and result in hiccups. Aerophagia, swallowing air while chewing gum or smoking. And the rare causes include malignancy and multiple sclerosis. Remember, majority of the hiccups that people experience or the patients experience, they are majority of the time due to gastric distension and they are benign. They do not need any evaluation. They do not need any treatment. They just go away after a few seconds, after a few minutes. And they are benign. They are not problematic. But in very few rare cases, in very few cases in the patients in oncology wards, in the patients with end stage renal diseases or in patients who are on chemotherapy, you would see that these patients are having intractable hiccups, hiccups for persisting for days, hiccups lasting for more than 48 hours. In, in few patients, you would see hiccups would be lasting for weeks and months. Our target is to understand the persistent and intractable hiccups. So these are the rare causes of hiccups, malignancy and multiple sclerosis. Majority of the cases are due to gastric distension. Hiccups can also be drug induced. Dexamethasone has been associated to cause hiccups. CNS causes. Remember CNS damage, CNS infection, strokes can result in hiccups. Especially lateral medullary syndrome has been associated with hiccups. In post-op patient where there is glottic stimulation due to intubation, it can result in hiccups. In ENT, if, the, if there is foreign body in the ear, pharyngitis, laryngitis can cause hiccups. Now coming to the treatment and management of hiccups. In the treatment and management, we divide the patient into two categories. One category is the one that has benign hiccups that do not need evaluation. They just need physical therapy. They don't even need medication. And the other one are the patients that are having intractable and persistent hiccups. The patients that need evaluation. The patients that will need medication. In the management, if the hiccup is lasting for less than 48 hours, it's a benign hiccup. It is not concerning. It does not require evaluation. And all you need to do is that you have to provide physical maneuvers. You have to guide the patient about the physical maneuvers that the patient can perform. Now, the basic purpose of the physical maneuvers is to either irritate the pharynx or to simulate the vagal nerve so that vagal nerve is stimulated and the spasmodic contractions of the diaphragm stop. The physical maneuvers include holding breath for 5 to 10 seconds. Basically, if there is a hypercapnia, CO2 retention, it has shown that CO2 retention stops the spasmodic contraction of diaphragm. So we want to induce hypercapnia and this is the most common method that majority of us use when we have hiccups that we stop breathing for at least 5 to 10 seconds and after some time we are totally fine. Basically the mechanism behind it is that uh, that 5 to 10 uh, seconds of breath holding they induce hypercapnia in blood and that hypercapnia stops the spasmodic contractions. Performing Valsalva maneuver for 5 seconds. Sipping or gargling with a very cold water. We want to irritate the pharynx. Biting into lemon. Pulling on the tongue. Swallowing teaspoon of dry sugar. Pressing gently and firmly on the eyeballs to stimulate the vagal nerve. While in sitting position, pulling the knees up to the chest and hold it for one minute to increase pressure, intra-abdominal pressure and that increased intra-abdominal pressure stops the contraction of diaphragm. So these are all the vagal maneuvers. The basic purpose is to stimulate the vagal nerve and or to irritate the pharynx so that or to induce hypercapnia in the body so that the hiccups stop. And majority of the hiccups are benign and they will stop by these physical maneuvers and don't, don't even need medications. 
and if the hiccups are lasting for more than 48 hours then either they are persistent hiccups or they are intractable persistent hiccups are the one that last from 48 hours to one month and intractable hiccups are the ones that are for more than one month and these usually occur in the patients with advanced malignancy or patients with stroke cns damage or the patients who are on chemotherapy these are the patients who suffer from intractable hiccups and these patients are concerning this thing is concerning hiccups lasting for 48 hours is concerning you should evaluate these patients but the main focus should always be to relieve the symptoms first and then go for evaluation because this thing is very distressing having hiccups for more than 48 hours it's very distressing because uh, if, if we have uh, hiccups for at least few minutes it's so uh, uncomfortable and imagine if someone has hiccups for more than 48 hours these patients can't even sleep so you have to evaluate but before that you have to relieve the patient's symptoms in evaluation of the patient, if the patient is taking dexamethasone, switch the patient to methylprednisone because dexamethasone has been associated with causing hiccups. And you start the empiric therapy. In the empiric therapy, even if the patient is not having any uh, symptoms of GERD or these conditions, as I said, majority of the cases have gastric distension and the gastric problems that cause hiccups. In empiric therapy, you can give proton pump inhibitor to these patients. And if the hiccups are not controlled, the first line drugs include baclofen. Remember, baclofen is a muscle relaxant. So what we want to do is we want to stop the contractions of diaphragm. And therefore, we give baclofen oral 5 to 10 mg three times daily. Or you can use gabapentin. Gabapentin is especially useful in the patients with stroke who are having persistent hiccups. 100 to 400 mg three times daily. So these are the first line drugs, the preferred first line drugs in patients with persistent or intractable hiccups. After you have given these drugs and the patient is not improving, in that case, you can consider metoclopramide. Remember, metoclopramide is a prokinetic drug. It, it causes movement of the food, movement of the uh, digestive acids that are present in the stomach, move, movement of the gastric content ahead so it is a prokinetic drug and it can relieve the gastric distension and metoclopramide is given 10 mg orally three to four times daily iv or im can also be used if the patient cannot take the drug orally remember the side effect of uh, metoclopramide is tardive dyskinesia as if given in increased dosages now when you have given the ppis to the patient you have tried baclofen you have tried gabapentin or metoclopramide and the patient is still having hiccups in such patients you can use chlorpromazine chlorpromazine is basically an antipsychotic remember the treatment of hiccups involves so many different variety of uh, uh, drugs all drugs have different mechanisms of action the basic target is that it's based on your suspicion that you consider that this might be the cause of the hiccups and you give drug accordingly and if that drug does not work you can change the drug to a different category so chlorpromazine comes with the brand name of Lurjectel, which is very effective in controlling hiccups. 25 mg orally three times a day can be given. And as soon as the patient recovers from it, as soon as the hiccups stop, you can stop the treatment a day after the cessation of hiccups. Side effect of chlorpromazine include hypotension and drowsiness. Other drugs that have also shown to reduce persistent or intractable hiccups include lidocaine, phenytoin, pregabalin, carbamazepine, all different variety of drugs with different mechanisms of actions. So the basic concept is that in majority of the cases, hiccups are benign. They do not need any medication. They, they just get better with physical maneuver. But if the patient is having persistent hiccups for more than 48 hours and that hiccup is not getting better with the physical maneuvers, in those patients, you go for medications. In medications, you have variety of options. The first line drugs are baclofen and gabapentin. After that, you can go for metoclopramide or chlorpromazine. And there are many other drug options that you can use you have to basically assess the patient and think that what drug is most suitable for that patient before going into the summary if you like my video please click on the subscribe button if you are new to this channel please like this video and follow my various playlists on emergency medicine lectures neurology lectures on this in this channel i have taught so many uh, different chapters of medicine what is hiccup an involuntary spasmodic contraction of diaphragm most commonly due to gastric distension drug induced cns causes post-op and ent causes physical maneuvers to stop it the management if less than 48 hours you have to go for 
physical maneuvers does not re uh, require any evaluation not concerning if it is more than 48 hours it's persistent it's concerning needs evaluation evaluation of patient you change the drug if the patient is taking dexamethasone you shift the patient to methylprednisone and the empiric therapy starts from proton pump inhibitors first line drugs include beclofen gabapentin after that you can use metoclopramide clorpromazine comes with the name of lurjectil other drugs that can be used to stop the hiccups if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine lectures and neurology lectures the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much